to do is cut a piece out of this chunk of scrap metal and I need to flatten the edge because it's got this 90 degree bend in it that I don't want to have try and clamp up in my vise. Now my vise has this nice little flat spot on the back and it has this nice flat spot here on the back of the jaw. Each one of them, well, I had to replace this section so it's not been beat up. But the back of this beam is, has got hammer marks on it where people have straightened things out on it in the past. I had to replace this piece of steel here because it was busted out. I don't know why it was busted out, but I'm assuming somebody drove onto the, the vise too hard and cracked it. I have a piece of railroad iron here. It's a handy thing to have around. I can set it on top of the bench, and if I hit it, it just bounces. steel it's resilient it bounces cast iron is not resilient one of the nice things about a cast iron piece is it doesn't bounce it makes a great vice it's very stiff it doesn't flex it does have a limitation though it has a tensile strength that is lower than steel steel will bend before it breaks cast iron will break before it bends there's always a warning with a steel vice you'll see that the thing starts wobbling and the jaws open up. Usually it's because the uh, beam has bent. With a cast iron vise like this, you're just cranking on it one day and it goes pop and no more vise. Keeping a short piece of railroad iron around your shop to beat on is always a good idea unless you're one of those fortunate few that has an anvil in their shop. I have one out in the blacksmith shop and I have a piece of railroad iron down here. Now, say I want to cut a section out of this piece of sheet metal. I have it flattened so that I'm reasonably certain I'm going to be cutting a square cut. So I'm going to strike a line across it. set that line down even with the face of the jaw. You can snug it up a little bit and wobble it back and forth until it lines up where you want. Now I have the steel snugly in the jaws. I hold the chisel bevel up. Set it edge on to the sheet metal. running my little finger along the top of the vise to hold the chisel at the proper angle and it shears it off exactly smooth with the edge of the jaw. Now because my vise is straight, the jaws are square, I ended up with a cut that's straight and square. If your jaws are crooked, you're going to end up with a cut that's probably crooked. I'm going to scribe another line. 
90 degrees to the original. Just so I don't cut my fingers, I'm going to stick the piece of metal in the vise so it'll hold it securely. Now with the edge of the square snugly up against the piece of material, that straight edge that I just established by cutting along the top of the vise, I have another line. Then. Set the part in the vise, set that line on top of the jaw, snug it up, wiggle it around until it's square, and I cut it again. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Now how thick a material could I do this with? I really have no idea. I've only cut sheet metal with it because mostly I really don't need to do this with heavy material and it would probably require a whole lot more effort than just cutting this the way that I'm cutting it. I think anything up to like 16 gauge you're probably going to be all right. This is about 22 gauge, so it's fairly thin. And it's just a piece of junk that I had out in the scrap bin that I wanted to show you guys how it worked. This is a 16 ounce hammer. And this is a 12 ounce hammer. There's nothing to say that I need a 16 ounce hammer to cut this. With. Because I'm only shearing across 22, 22 gauge steel, the only amount of material I'm cutting is the thickness of the 22 gauge material. I'm not trying to shear it off straight and I'm not trying to go edge on. I'm taking it at an angle so that I've, I've hit it at its weakest point. My little hammer just walks right through it. I have one more cut to make. I'm using my first cut as my line to square against again. I'm zeroing out on that first cut. Take my file and I break the edges because all that chisel work put a whole lot of fish hooks on the edge of this piece of steel.
each hammer blow pushes a little fish hook out of the edge of the steel. You can see the you can see the little edges on the material and this is the side that I just filed to remove the fish hooks. Now you don't necessarily have to remove the fish hooks but you're doing the work why not do a good job and make it so the next time you pick this thing up you don't have to be careful And there's a completed tag out of a piece of scrap metal, cut with only a hammer and a chisel. Nothing fancy. This is just an old piece of hardened tool steel that has been ground to make a uh, single bevel chisel. And this is a piece of an old dryer cover. You don't need a whole lot of fancy equipment to cut a groove in a piece of steel or to cut a tag. I could have used the power saws or the milling machine or drill press or a grinder or any kinds of thing that I had, but a chisel in a file, an appropriately sized hammer, one pound or a 12 ounce, either one worked just fine. Some of you guys ask about chisels. Well, I gave you chisels. I don't know if that's the ones you were talking about, but that's the chisels I gave you. If any of you have any other suggestions for a video, or questions about this video or any of the others that I've done, just drop a note in the comments below. I read them all, you know. Thanks for watching.